This is Robbie Graham speaking. I was about 19 months old when Scooby-Doo first premiered in 1969. Of course, I was too young to remember the original CBS run of Scooby-Doo Where Are You and the new Scooby-Doo movies in 1972. I made up for that when these shows went into syndication in my area in the early 1980s. But I do remember when the show moved from CBS to ABC in 1976, and I have seen it religiously ever since. I agree some variations are better than others, but Velma is by far the worst show I've ever seen, period. How could the people behind this show do what they did to this beloved franchise? In my profile of she last season, my final words were that I quote, It is my hope that with all that's going on in the world, and we need togetherness now more than ever, that something like this never divides people like that ever again. It was in reference to how the she reboot divided people online between older fans and new fans who liked it for its sense of interpretation. More than two years after the new she series ended, I believe people learned from this, and never before in the history of the internet that just about everyone, regardless of age, race, religion, color, political affiliation, nationality, and sexual orientation have banded together to say that this was the worst show they had ever seen. In reality, Velma isn't vindictive, Daphne isn't a drug dealer, Fred isn't a mama's boy who can't think or do for himself, and Shaggy, or Norville, isn't a pushover. But this is how they're supposed to be in reality, and not whatever this is. Like most of you, I too have asked myself, who is this show for anyway? And like most of you, I don't have an idea either. This show puts down just about everyone. And Velma, you don't try to sell drugs like vendors at a baseball game tries to sell hot dogs. And it was apparent that this show also made fun of the Flintstones, Captain Caveman, and the Jetsons. And all of this began with Velma dissing Judy Jetson in the teaser trailer. During the last five weeks, I have seen more than 300 different YouTube videos on this subject, and almost all of them are in total agreement in addition to my own videos. On this channel, we have more than 900 characters represented from more than 175 different franchises spanning more than a century, from five different generations and seven different countries. The characters that originated from newspapers, radio, movie theaters, comic books, television, and even literature. Sure, it's hard to imagine that a cartoon character can play American football, but it's also a fun and creative way to enjoy these characters in an entirely different light that doesn't reflect on their true legacies. You will see it for yourself when the season begins in April. Everyone here on this channel is committed and dedicated to what's great about animation. To the showrunner, voice actors, writers, animators, and others who worked on this show, May I say congratulations. You created the worst show in television history, and you should all be ashamed of yourselves. I admit I'm more of a Daphne fan than a Velma th fan, but I wouldn't have butchered Velma this badly in any way. All five Mystery Inc. characters are charter members of the USCFL and have shaped the league into what it is now. If there really is a Season 2 of Velma, we will continue to rate, review, and score for the episode shown. We strive for excellence here on this channel, and we thank you for your likes, comments, and subscriptions. Be sure to keep posted for our annual introduction video and the USCFL's 43rd year beginning December 7th. And now, the finale of Season 1 of Velma.
Let's get ready to rumble! Greens, cartoon and football fans, and especially fans of what used to be Scooby-Doo. This is Robbie Graham of the USCFL Network welcoming you to the finale of Season 1 of Velma. We made it, folks. This terrible show has reached its less than stellar climax. If there is a second season, all I can say is that it can only go up from here. If you're joining us for the first time, May we extend to you a cordial welcome, and we hope you'll enjoy everything this channel has to offer. Unlike Velma, the USCFL Network is fun, entertaining, and also offers both information and education. Subscribe to this channel, join our team, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Normally, we would strive to be one of YouTube's least offensive channels by providing a different spin about your favorite cartoon characters from the past and present that doesn't impact on their true legacies. If your favorite character or characters aren't mentioned in our videos, please leave a comment and we will answer your questions. Also be sure to ring the bell to alert you of when we put up any new video. Due to the nature of the show we're reviewing, not, we're, we've done our best to tone down the language. To recap what's happened since January 21st, this show has put up very poor numbers as we figured out since the teaser trailer first came out. So far, no touchdowns have been scored. Only three field goals and four safeties this show has managed to put up. As we go into the finale, Velma has a score of only 17 points out of a possible 64 points with a percentage rate of 21.3% based on the maximum score of 80 points. The final 16 points can be won if both of the final episodes each scores an 8. Can this be done? Find out after we take a brief pause and Bob Wilson will tell us if the finale can redeem this horrible show or will it be status quo for the rest of the season. Start a fight I 
This is Bob Mozart from the USCFL Network welcoming you to our fifth and final episode review of the Velma series on HBO Max. Episode 9, Family Woman. Dia is hospitalized and the doctors tell Velma and her father, Aman, that if Dia does not regain her memory within 72 hours, the memories will be lost forever. Velma believes that they should portray their home life as unchanged since the disappearance of Dia, so Sophie is sent packing. Velma tells Dia that the baby is hers with Norval. Velma accuses Shaggy's father as being the killer when she sees his welding mask, but that proves to be a red herring. Novel is so upset by Velma's false accusations that he ends his friendship with her. Fred and Daphne pretend to be dating to regain lost popularity at school. When they pretend to kiss in public, this upsets Velma. Dia finally finds out about Aman's relationship with Sophie, but is happy because that means an end to their loveless marriage. Dia's memories return and she confesses to being the serial killer. Episode 10, The Brains of the Operation. Velma is not convinced of her mother's guilt, but must quickly find the true killer as her mother is given a fast-track bill of execution. When talking to her mother, she notices that her mother is giving rote answers to any question and suspects that Dia has been hypnotized. Velma suddenly remembers that she herself was present when her mother was abducted and that the killer uh, hypnotized Velma to feel blame about her mother's disappearance and to suffer hallucinations whenever she tried to investigate. Daphne finds the watch that the killer used to hypnotize Dia and, and Velma, and the watch bears the logo of the Jones Gentleman Fine Accessories Company. Velma figures out that Fred's mother was the killer and that she was planning to switch Fred's brain with that of a more competent person to safeguard the future of the company. Velma breaks into the secret laboratory and finds Vel Mickey Victoria Jones about to transplant Daphne's brain into Fred's body. Velma interrupts the process and then Norval arrives and Victoria is killed when one of the stalactites in the cavern falls on her. The four are hailed as heroes, but do not remain together due to their differing personalities. In a post credit scene, Sheriff Cogburn is killed by an intruder in the police archives. Scoring. Family Woman did little to advance the mystery as it was mostly comic scenes as Velma and Aman tried to convince Dia that everything was normal at home. I give it a zero. The Brains of the Operation gets a two. It showed that there was a coherent mystery, even if that mystery did not follow the usual pattern of the villain turning out to be a counterfeiter or a land speculator posing as a monster. Next week we shall have one last review of the entire series as a whole and discuss the many cringeworthy aspects about it, as well as the total lack of character development. This is Bob Mozart from the USCFL Network, returning you to Robbie Graham for the wrap-up.
Welcome back. I stated at the start of this episode runoff that it was the sixth runoff we've done. And as, and as of these six runoffs, this show by far was the worst. I've heard on other YouTube channels that there will be a second season of this universally hated show. Bob Wilson and I didn't watch this series for any other reason than Scooby-Doo is part of the USCFL. And like with the She-Ra controversy, if that character or characters are in this league, it's our duty to cover it and report on it as well. When I made a comment about the fact that I saw the first two episodes on another YouTube video, the reply was that I was brave and courageous. Bravery or courage had nothing to do with this, but I will state that I didn't laugh at one single scene in this series. I like a good joke, sure, but there was nothing to laugh at or with. It didn't matter what kind of agenda these people behind this series was trying to please, but again, no one was pleased by this show. And as you heard, for the second straight week, Bob only took about three and a half minutes to give his scores with a second zero. In conclusion, this show should act as a how-not-to guide for putting up any television series, whether it's animated or live action. The final score for season one is Velma scored 19 points out of a possible 80 points with a percentage rate of 23.8% based on the maximum score. As you heard, next week, Bob and I together for the first time and at the same time will review Velma as a whole series in which we will cover everything that's wrong with this show. This special edition of Inside the USCFL will be seen beginning Tuesday, February 28th. The reason for this is that next Saturday, the 25th, will be my 55th birthday and I won't be able to put up the video at that time. So until February 28th, this is Robbie Graham of the USCFL Network wishing you peace. Take care and stay safe.